Hey, my name is Lisa. Welcome to King Worldwide. Today we're going to be doing a practical application of basically Bible study, or we can call it, excuse me, we can call it Bible study, we can call it um, time with Jesus, we can call it number one priority, appointment. This is just a simple example to give um, people an idea of what to do uh, when they want to spend time with the Lord every day. If you're watching our broadcast and learning um, having an appointment with the Lord every day. Here's just a, a ballpark um, example, a ballpark, like you could do anything. But I wanted to do, the Lord said today to just do a, um, what was the word? I put example up there, you don't even see it, but practical application. Usually I'm not a practical application. I mean, I am, but so anyway, we're going to start with just like it says on the board. The first thing we do every day, hallelujah. Um, first thing we do every day is what the word says in First Timothy. Oh, you can't see it. Excuse me. Let me, maybe you can. First Timothy 2, 1 through 4. And I'm going to just do what I do and join in if you'd like. Okay, so thank you, Father, for your blessing upon all mankind, kings and all that are in position of authority and high responsibility on earth, all levels of government positions and leadership roles, Continually transform into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. All people and political leadership in all cities, states, countries, including the United States and Israel, are born again, Holy Spirit filled, and Holy Spirit led. I remind all principalities and powers of darkness that the blood of Jesus Christ is completely protecting President Donald J. Trump and his family from evil and the author of evil every second of every day. That is what the Bible says to do, our first of all prayer. Okay, number two, seated, take authority. So, um, Whenever there's a king in a, in a place, country or whatever, whenever he makes orders, he's always from a place of authority seated at the throne. So I make sure, I wrote on my little sheet, seated, I take my authority. And we do this every day, every morning. These are the first two things I always do. And it's from Ephesians 2, 6. All right. Seated, I take my authority. And so I wrote, I typed these out so I could understand what I was doing and saying, but it's right in the scripture. I'm co-included in Jesus' death and resurrection. I'm elevated and equally present in God's throne room where I'm co-seated and fully represented with Jesus Christ and his executive authority. So when you're born again, this is what we get to do. Glory to God. So we have authority over the darkness of this world when we have Jesus in our heart, but we have to take that authority. So therefore, I remind you, Satan, and I talk to him directly, I'm not afraid, and all your low-level devils, all your demonic forces all your plots ploys and plans that you are under my feet you must cease and desist in all your plots plans ploys and maneuvers that you have against me my family members my partners in ministry this ministry businesses all my relatives everybody i know and i count everybody i know you have no place here in my presence or around anyone or anything that is in my life and you must cease and desist, and I'll ask anyone or anything that's connected with the blessing of God in and on me in God's ministry, King Worldwide. So scat rat. And I make sure that I do that. Um, it's not, Nothing is legalistic. We can do whatever we want. These are just um, not even habits, routine that I go through. And I'm not always sitting. I, I am sitting in the same place normally, but again, just have fun with it. Okay, so the next thing I do is I use the pursuit of... God's presence. So mine has been ripped up. So what I did, I had a little binder and that's pursuit of his presence from the Copelands. And I had put it in a three ring binder. So you can do whatever you want. But today's is August 30th. And I go through the scripture. I'll show you what it looks like. You go through the scripture and then read. And then from there, I usually start what I do with the Lord. So I'm always talking to the Lord. I love you. Thank you for this day. This is so great. I love you. Thank you for my friends, family. I had already prayed for my partners in the morning. So this one is called, from Brother Copeland, Don't Play the Game. And I do recommend this devotional for everybody. One, that we're all on the same page. And two, it's very strong and I like it. It's not just a lot of meat. I mean, it's not a lot of fluff. It's a lot of meat. All right, so the first scripture is John 5, 41 through 44. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name. Jesus is saying that. And ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? 
All right, I read that. Okay, that's not, I'm doing exactly what I normally do. All right, so honor. Godly honor is the kind of honor that keeps its word and standard of integrity no matter what. It never fails. It always succeeds. I, I like to highlight and write. You can do whatever you want. Every day, commitments of honor are required of us. We have choices to make regarding ethics in our job, disciplining our children, keeping our marriage strong, and it can be hard. It's a choice between God's honor and man's. One brings true and sure success, and one brings, and I put it in red when it's about the flesh or the enemy. So that's my new little thing I've been doing for about a year now. So I, when I look at it, I see red, I see flesh or the liar, and I, I make sure that's not what I want. So this is, and one brings shallow, temporal success that ends in ultimate failure. In other words, it looks good, but doesn't last. You can't just live the Christian life without honor. You'll never be faithful without it. You can't be. Without honor, you don't have the power to be faithful. It's just not in us. So here on, in John 5, 41 through 44, Jesus told the Pharisees about honor that comes from God only. That's the kind of honor we must have to stand in our day. You can be a powerful force in the earth as a believer who walks by faith, but to do it, we must operate in honor. This is so good. It reminded me of when I used to work in the corporate, corporate America. Man's definition of honor, however, is quite different from God's. It is a derivative of the honor of God, but it is light and shallow. It is a false honor that deceives men. The world's honor that comes from men and is given to men is what I call the honor game. In this sport, and some people really make it a sport, everything is done to gain the prestige, power, and authority that other men can give. It's temporal, short-lived, and dishonorable in view of what some men will do to get it. In playing the game, people will scheme, beg, swap favors, cheat, and shade the truth to win. You may work with people like that. These schemers may receive the same physical privileges, the same honor as those who are truly deserving, although they did not win with true honor. But no, in the long run, they do not win. This is the exact example that happened with me. I had surrendered, and I was in 2013, and my numbers were better than ever, and it's just a fact. Somebody else was given the honor and the award. They didn't cheat or anything, but it was just personal preference, and that's not what we get paid for. Anyway, I did get a raise. The other person didn't, and look who's not working there now anyway. I'm free from that because I get to do what God wants me to do. So it did turn out in the long run. I did have to repent for my bad attitude because at first I was like, I thought you wanted to be exalted. He said, yeah, I will exalt with you when I'm ready. I'll, I will do the glory. It's not about you, lady. I'm like, okay, yes, sir. Thank you. Forgive me. So on the other hand, last little paragraph, God is faithful to honor you when you act honorably. That's because you're acting in something that originated in him. Oh, and by the way, the reason why I was tested, because who's I, where were my eyes? Where was my focus? On myself. If I was really uh, focused on the Lord, which I was becoming, I would have been like, good for her. Glory to God. You know, and I, it, it was just that I had, it doesn't matter. There's no excuses. I just, I'm glad that I'm there now. I've gotten better now. We keep working on it. So, um, but that was just being transparent. Okay, so let's keep going. So God is faithful to honor when you act honorably. That's because you're acting in something that originated in him. He is honorable. So don't play the game. Live honorably with the honor that comes from God alone. Your rewards will be far greater and eternal. He guarantees it guarantees it oh and i really like to part speak the word my nephew always says speak the word as i honor god he honors me first samuel 2 30 normally i go to well actually let's no i don't have it marked normally i go to first samuel 2 30 and make sure it's it's highlighted in my new bible so now i get a new bible all the time i like fresh no writing so now these are then i go to the bibles of what is in the devotional unless the lord tells me otherwise so here is, I like to do a parallel. This one is King James, New King James and Amplified. I wanted new. And then Mirror. Mirror, this is the study Bible. All right. I know everyone, pick your Bibles. Do whatever you want. You don't have to even do this. You can stay in King James and you can probably know more than anybody in the world. It's just, I didn't understand poetry when I was in high school, college. I didn't like it. I, I just didn't. I like, I learned on King James. So I like New King James. I like it all. But point is, 
I used King James for three or three, four, actually seven years. So thank you, mom. I know. Which ones do you use? Would you like to type and tell us you're so precious with your verse by verse? But verse by verse, I'm going to do the verse John 5. This is just an example today, and it's verses um, 41 through 45, and I'm going to do the example of verse by verse by verse. You don't have to do it. It's It was just, it was what the Holy Spirit suggested that I do, and it really changed me, and I didn't even know how much I was being changed. So I will begin with John 5, 41, and I'm going to start in, I'm going to go in this order, New King James Amplified Mirror. Okay, here we go. John 5, I do not receive honor from men. Now, normally I would probably do that, start at the John 5 in the very beginning, but this is just for an example. I do not receive honor from men, okay? Now I'm going to, I receive not glory from men. I crave no human honor. I look for no mortal fame. Okay, now let me get into the mirror. I am not, oh, I like this one so much. I am not anchoring my belief in people's opinion. Okay, ding, ding, ding. That, I could just write in my journal right now about that. And I would want to say, this is exactly what I do. I don't use red and that. I would use blue. And I'm going to do date it. And I'm going to just write a note to myself. Again, you don't have to do this. This is what I like to do to help me learn. It's, even though I have it all red and highlighted and all, just to show you, it's, it's that's how it is. But I still like it. So, do what you want. So, I, so I'm going to put it in here. I, and I'll put the mirror... I am not anchoring my belief, I'm not going to write it all because for time, in people's opinions. And then I would further say, in myself, in people, in things, in flesh, I would add those things because I'm like, obviously, he's saying anchored in God. So let's keep going. 542, but I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. Jesus is talking. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. The Good News Bible and the Kenneth Copeland Word Faith Study Bible. That's a really good one. Modern English. And it's really, I think it says in the beginning that the modern English is the newest King James Version. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, so then next we go to 42. But I know you and recognize and understand that you have not the love of God in you. He's talking to the Pharisees, I think. Now let's go in mirror. But what I observe about you is that God's love does not resonate within you people. He says within you. You're so obsessed with the rule book that all you see in it is a God of judgment and wrath and miss out on God's love. Okay, I'm going to highlight God's love part and put in my journal, God's love, number one. I mean, I know these things are silly, but it's just fun. To me, how can anyone be bored doing this? At first, it might seem like a lot. You gotta have a space, you gotta have your Bibles. I like doing the full Bible because there's too many temptations on electronics electronics, unless it's just an electronic Bible. I don't know how, who makes those that are just that. So anyway, there's too much distraction, but notification. So I like to have it all here and then I write notes in here. Do what you want. The point is getting to know God and spending time with him in his word. Okay, next, 43. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you receive. Amplified. I have come in my Father's name and with his power, and you do not receive me. Your hearts are not open to me. You give me no welcome. But if another comes in his own name and his own power and with no other authority but himself, you will receive him and give him your approval amplified okay we're still at 43 thank you for the sounds okay jesus is saying here i am representing my father father god and you have a problem with that yet someone completely unknown to anyone will come in his own name and you will give him your full support and in the notes it says how strikingly has this been verified in the history of the jews from the time of jesus christ to our time 64 false christs have been reckoned by whom they have been deceived. That was from Bangle, B-E-N-G-E-L. Okay, one last verse for, for, for this video. 
Have 44, how can you believe you receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only comes from the only God? 44, um, amplify. How is it possible for you to believe? How can you learn to believe? You who are content to seek and receive praise and honor and glory from one another. Okay, I'm going to put that in red right away. I don't want to have any praise from one another. And I don't want to seek it either. Who are content to seek and receive praise and honor and glory from one another. And yet, do not seek the praise and honor and glory which comes from him who alone is God. Glory to God. Okay, now we're in 44. This just happens to be a little negative about the Pharisees, but it's not. It's just so good. How is it possible for you to even venture into the dimensions of faith? So this is what I would take from this. How can we walk and live by faith? If we're staying in the natural, focusing on the natural, focusing on self or what other men, women, people think. That's the point. Okay, bless your eyes that see clearly and perfectly at every angle in my life. If you already have your minds made up to go with popular opinion or who's most popular or has the most followers or who has the most entertaining antics, then um, within your own ranks, while you show no desire to esteem him, who proceeds directly from God. And it's so true. The word of God is being preached and spoken from various, you know, lots of people actually. And a lot of times it's not entertaining. It might not feel good. Those that are open and hungry, they will be blessed. It's opening their hearts and they're, they're opening their hearts and they're receiving what God has for them. It has nothing to do with, with the speaker or the video videographer or, or the person. It's the anointing of God that destroys yokes and changes things. All we're supposed to do is be obedient. It would be ridiculous if I tried to, to take lessons on talking because one, that's not what he told me to do. And two, it's not about me. It's really about God. And the best part of life is allowing the word of God, what we're doing right here, to change us from the inside out. And um, so for to wrap this up, so the Bible study, this is what I would do. It depends on what your time is with your Lord and what appointment you've made every day. Um, you can do whatever you want. The truth of the matter is, if you want to have the victorious life that Jesus Christ provided for us and that God created us to have, it comes from knowing our Father and knowing Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to live in and through us. We can't most likely allow the Holy Spirit to do that and we won't trust him if we don't know him and if we we can't know him if we don't read in the word and so when the Lord showed me how to do it this way I wasn't very before I wasn't gonna just stay I wasn't excited about just reading King James I did like the New Testament but at this point I, w I was actually gonna do whatever he said for me to do and then he told me that in the beginning it was so nice and then he told me to add the third Bible and it's not about the exercise. It's about being in the word every day. And consistency lies the power. So enjoy your time with the Lord. It, just make it consistent and it'll change your life. It'll change your life. You'll hear him speak. And so we will see you on Monday. I know it's good. it's the holiday, but we I'm sure that we'll still be filming. And with God's way of success. Oh, and we're going to be announcing that we're on podcasts now. All, a lot of podcasts are being uploaded right as we speak. And so if those of you don't want to be tempted from other things on YouTube or distracted um, and watch videos, we'll be able to watch, listen to the podcasts. Okay, have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.